Ahoy hoy and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today uh, we are going to uh, do something a little different, something I've done before. Um, we are going to write an SCP live, not technically live, but here on the, on the ch on the channel as as uh, and you're gonna watch me do it. Um, last night, uh, somebody's uh, on Discord was like, uh, write a SCP in ten thousand, no, a thousand, no, it's a thousand minutes or ten thousand. It was ten thousand minutes, I think. I don't remember. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, I, what I ended up doing was uh, basically just going, hey, you know what? Fine. I have an SCP idea in my head already, and I went ahead and wrote out the first draft. Um, I don't think the thing is postable quite yet. Maybe it is. I think it actually could probably survive on the wiki, but I think it's it relies a little bit on a twist, and those tend to require a little bit of fine tuning. But the basic premise is that the SCP is told from the perspective of a whole site of SCP staff that died in an accident, but they don't know it yet. Uh, and essentially, they're observing this one guy who managed to survive the accident. But they think it's the other way around. They think he died. They all survived. And uh, they don't understand why this ghost has uh, the ability to you know, move stuff or whatever. Uh, and they're not fully cognizant of their uh, situation either. But anyway, that's the basic premise I was working with. Um, let's go ahead. And I what I did was I recorded the video. I turned it into, uh, I turned it from a 56 minute video. Yeah, that's how long it took me to start from zero and go to go to what I needed to be. Uh, and I turned it into a 12 minute long video. Yep. All right. Record. There we go. All right. So normally I say, and we are, we're in it now. Normally I say that object classes don't matter, but that's not always true. Sometimes they do matter. And here I think it matters because uh, this is an uncontainable ghost from their perspective. So that makes it a keter. And while it's not super important to the narrative, it is important enough to include. So you'll see me writing keter in. And also I, I had a, a template ready uh, so that I in some of the collapsible code so I wouldn't have to worry about it. Now, we start with SCP-XXX is the ectoplasmic entity formerly known as Doctor. And here I take a second, I want to pause it again. Here I take a second to uh, uh, consider what name I'm going to come up with. I like to sprinkle my works with references. In this particular case, we're doing ghosty type references. Uh, and I end up settling with Marcus Robinson, but that's going to change in the final product. I don't know what the... I, it doesn't change in the final product you're going to see here, but the eventual posted version won't be that. Uh, it possesses several... Oh, let's go back a second. Hold on. Play it again. Play it again, Sam. Is the ectoplasmic entity formerly known as Dr. Marcus Robinson is capable. Okay, so here's where we uh, see sort of a difference in uh, approach. A lot of people here would just immediately list off the stuff they're capable of doing. Um, what I wanted to do was sort of list it as like, a, you know, an ect is the ectoplasmic entity formerly known as blah, 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 blah implying that ectoplasmic entities have a, basically a standard set of abilities uh, and saying that Mr. Robinson, or I should say Dr. Robinson, he didn't go to fake medical college or whatever. What is his, I don't know what his uh, specialization is actually. Um, he didn't go to fake college in order to be called Mr. Um, but in this particular case, Robinson's entity possesses atypical abilities, stuff that's unusual in comparison to average ectoplasmic entities. I also, also took a second to try and come up with like a phrase that seemed original, and I could not come up with anything that I, I, I liked. Ectoplasmic is, uh, is about as accurate as it can be. It comes from ectoplasm, which means was outside spirit? Or outside something. I know ecto means outside. I can't remember what plasm means. It might be, might be spirit. Uh, anyway, 
primarily, and you'll see some typos too. Primary is an ability should be primarily amongst them is an ability, which I believe I correct later in the draft. Pause again. Uh, to move objects and access workstations. Additionally, it's intangible and all attempts to control his uh, should be an its. I haven't actually changed that in the draft yet. It's currently unknown if blah, blah, blah is aware of site personnel. Now you'll see me pause there for a second because I know for a fact I can't remember how to spell personnel. I never get it right on the first try and I have to use spell check to get it correct. You also might be wondering why I'm using a notepad. I use a notepad because I don't need the distractions of spell check. Uh, even though apparently so every once in a while I distract myself with it. But generally, if I make a mistake, it's better to fix it after I'm finished than to stop my train of thought and go back and fix something in the immediate sense. Is uh, all, right, all right, to the basic application of, and you're going to see two things. First of all, pause it for a second. Uh, I'm listening to Ordinary World by, what is it, Duran Duran? Uh, and I am now about to look up Haley Joel Osment. Uh, who was the child in The Sixth Sense, because I want to pepper my document with references. And here we go. And I was going to spell it wrong. So that's the main reason I even looked it up in the first place. It was going to be like the Osmond ect ectoplasmic principle, but I was like, nah, let's just go with the Osmond principle. It's a little bit more. And then a footnote. And yes, I know the code for footnote. It's not super complicated. <laughs> As it feels the most is the belief that most ectoplasmic entities are a result of the entity's sudden or violent death. Often entities formed this way do not know that they have become uh, deceased, though they can be guided through the experience of demanifest. This is something you can do, by the way, and I'm, I'm going to joke and it's going to sound super. Um, what's the word here? Not jaded. Uh, <laughs> I'm a writer. You think I could come up with a word for this? Uh, it's going to sound, yeah, I guess jaded a little bit, but um so this article, the idea that there's a person who doesn't know that they're dead yet, uh, is, you know, the sixth sense. That's the sixth sense twist. Um, one thing you can do to sort of not head off, but like acknowledge a reference like that, because a lot of people will be like, well, this has already been done. You know, whatever is to have a little subtle little reference to it. Like, yeah, I am. I am creating something similar to that. I am aware of it. You don't have to let me know. And it's not a negative. It's a positive now. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a little homage to one of like three good uh, M. Night Shyamalan movies. As such as an utmost imperative nature. And my music needed to be restarted. I, I had it running on, what's it called? Incognito mode. So that if I had to do a bunch of searches, it wouldn't be uh, crowded and cluttered with information that you guys didn't need. Now, with that all said, um, what we want to imply here is that the SCP Foundation doesn't want uh, SCP-XXXX to find peace and to solve its problems. Um, and, and also, this is me, and I should have had 2343 opened the entire time because it's got pretty much everything I need in it. Um, one of the things is that I need is to uh, the technical, not technical definition, but technical item that is used to keep ghosts under uh, wraps. Uh, I believe I pulled it originally from a DJ Cactus article, but it shows up in 2343, which is a pretty popular article in and of itself. So I think it's fair to say that it exists in both now. Um, but yeah, the non-physical, let's see if we get it right here. The non, yeah, I just copy pasted non-physical displacement neutralizers, which are for ghosts. It makes it so that they uh, are no longer ghosty. Now, once I get to this point, you'll notice I didn't do my containment procedures first. A lot of people want to write top to bottom, finish your containment procedures, then get started on your description. I've said it before and I've, I'll say it again. I feel this is a failure in the uh, writing process because, and I, I want to be clear about this. Um, you need to know what your SCP is before you know how to contain it, right? You, you, you can write whatever you want to write in the special containment procedures, but you're going to need to revise it later if your description doesn't quite match up. Now, at this point, I, in the description, have already started talking about these non-physical displacement neutralizers, which are a thing that are going to be used in the special containment procedures. But if I'd written the special containment procedures first, I might not have arrived at the idea to use these. This is all, you know, coming as we go. 
uh, be put into place surrounding as site 21. I, that That's going to need to be changed a little bit, but so as to affect proper containment. I even use the word containment. Now I'm like, oh, containment. I should go back now, now that I have a better idea what I'm doing and a basic description of the object and create my containment procedures. Now, the important thing to remember is that your containment procedures are going to it contain a lot their containment procedures are going to contain a lot of uh foreshadowing for your story especially in one like this it's going to depend heavily on a twist uh is to be kept in the containment cell so here here you'll see me uh thinking through what the containment cell should be you want to keep this simple you don't need to be like a five by five by five uh chamber uh blah blah blah, blah. you can use just sort of standard language or at least the implication that there is a standard language for certain things. And it doesn't matter if what you're going to write hasn't showed up in a single other article in the SCP wiki. What matters is that you imply that it has. So standard, we start with standard humanoid containment cell, but that doesn't make any sense for what we're talking about here. It's a ghost. The so standard intangible uh, containment cell. And then I'm like, intangibility limited containment cell. It might be even be better with an intangibility limiter enabled containment cell but we'll work on that later right now it's following incident scp or xxx-34 um i write that first and then as i start making my way through it i'm like wait no this would be the inciting incident of the uh the creation incident so it needs to be a one not 34 there's not 33 incidents that came before it Communications with our, now this is supposed to be foreshadowing, and this is an example of a place where I think things are getting a little bit too obvious, but also the, the final draft, and the reason why I don't want it to be posted yet and think it still needs work, is both too obvious and too subtle with its twist. What the hell does that mean? Well, it's too subtle because I think people who are going to miss it are going to miss it no matter what, currently. And it's too obvious because I think the people who are going to get it are going to get it in the first few lines of the containment procedures. Um, right here, following the incident, communications with our primary foundation, well, if not the first line, the second time this comes up, uh, with our primary foundation supplier has been slower than normal. So the idea is that they're sending mess or quote unquote trying to send messages to request non-physical displacement neutralizers or Scranton reality anchors. What? Sorry, I get a bit of a hiccup all of a sudden. But they're requesting these things and no one's sending them. So instead they're like, okay, well, we'll just track him until someone successfully sends us the thing. Right. Is to be tracked at all times by empty up. And you'll see me like, again, this is about trying to find the right references, not necessarily trying to come up with cool names. Um, I can do that immediately. But the important part here is like, I want to do a Beetlejuice reference somewhere in this, and nothing in the final uh, draft is a Beetlejuice reference, but I feel like uh, I wanted to reference Sixth Sense, um, Beetlejuice, and Ghostbusters a little bit. And we went with uh, Psy349, the Ghostbusters. I guarantee you, though, and I probably might want to change that, that Ghostbusters probably already exists as an MTF. Under no circumstances are to be attempted until such time as the entity can be properly contained. Right. And you'll see a little like little bit like that where I'm splitting the sentences up just because I know um, when you post that when I post this, it, the display would make that one big chunk of text, which is a little bit difficult to get through. And it's there's a visual element to formatting that is well, all formatting is visual, but um, there's a visual element to your formatting that is incredibly important to keep in mind. So when you open up an SCP article and the first sentence of the containment procedures is on its own, it gives you the sense that you can read it and get us and get a really good idea of what's going on in your article. Right? Because it means that it's com it's a complete paragraph's worth of information, even if it's only one sentence. In this particular case, and it still needs to be rephrased, I think, a little bit. SCP XXX is to be kept in an intangibility limited containment cell on floor two of site 21. This provides a ton of information and a ton of draw for the reader. What the fuck is an intangibility limited containment cell? That is the drawing question. And it also introduces you to the idea of the site 21, which is important for the story going forward. 
And then you move into following incident X, 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 X dash O one. And you continue on with that again. This is very rough, actually. And I, while I think it may be good enough, the final product may be good because there's going to be little edits here and there. But while I think it may be good enough. I really would like to work on fine tuning the twist before it gets posted. One thing I've actually been considering is insertion of the phrase since we can't leave the site, which is a la deliberate lapse in tone. And uh, I'd like to use it at least three, if not four times throughout the article in different situations and contexts, uh, just to drive home the point that something strange is going on here. But now we're going to get back, I believe, into the description. Uh, after I wrote the containment procedures, I did a little bit. Of, I read the description again. Um, yeah, and now we're going to go into the incident because we just finished talking about it in the containment procedures. Brightly glowing blue gemstone. Now, I would very much like it if, yeah, uh, SCP XXX, the original SCP XXX, uh, which is going to be known as SCP XXXX X, um, was a blight, small, brightly glowing blue gemstone. Now, th on my on my end of things here, I actually find this to be uh, a little mundane and normal. It w it would behoove me. And would actually not just benefit me, but uh, make me happier if the blowing blue, the blowing, the glowing blue gemstone was somehow important to the story, but it doesn't appear to be yet. All right. SBXXXX-X was under direct observation by, we need to change that. I think we change it later to Dr. Because at that point, he's not an SCP. Uh, to Dr. Marcus Robinson. There's also some pronouns that need to be switched around eventually. Uh, these increased, and instead of increase, it should be increases, began to worry observing scientists. Uh, he attempted to apply an energy limiter. It should be limiter. Yeah, okay, he's been fixed. Uh, limiter, but was atomized during the process. Again, in this particular case, uh, I think atomized is the wrong choice. We could go with vaporized or disintegrated, but atomized has like a a uh, too sciency of, of uh, too, and more like 1950s sciency feel to it. Uh, the the powers of the atom, but uh, it, I was struggling to come up with a word that didn't that was a little different, and I think I could have just gone with vaporized. Vaporized is fine in this particular sense. And then pulsed once registers, and this you're going to come ectomorphic is where I, I, I settled on, but I think that may be. I didn't look, but I think that may be a word already. And if it is, even if it isn't, it's something I'd like to fiddle with a little bit. But I'm going to change that later. An ectomorphic radiation burst before itself atomizing, before the object itself was atomized. Again, I think we're going to go with vaporized for these. And now you're going to see me re, re yeah. Now I'm really reading everything and doing like tiny little edits along the way. These increases instead of increased. Um, make sure we're not. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is me reading. Oh, okay. And yeah, every once in a while it's good to be reread what you've already written to make sure you, you, you're happy with what's going on and to get you just get, keep yourself in. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Now here I made a decision given the bear. See, yeah. So this is more in the line of the fact that there's some difficulties with the ghosts of the Site-21 uh, understanding what's going on uh, with them, but they know that they can't leave the site. So it's given the barrier, and we're going to change the word barrier because that's a loaded word, but given the barrier just outside Site-21 that formed following SCP, following the inc incident, the MTF is not, and this is too specific. It's not clear to leave the site. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, given the logistical concerns. So instead of saying barrier, we say logistical concerns. And no site staff, including MTFs, are allowed to leave the grounds of site. I don't even know if including MTFs are, is required here. I might take that parenthetical out. Uh, but yeah, so we've changed it to instead of barrier, which has this very mystical sort of, you know, go even somewhat ghosty sort of feel to it and is a little too obvious, given logistical concerns following the incident, no site staff are allowed to leave the grounds of Site-21. 
Now we get back down to the bottom, which is the part that inspired that inclusion into the containment procedures, where it talks again about the incident. It has become increasingly difficult to access site-based communications and workstations. Documentation, especially that of this object, is to be maintained by any means necessary, regardless of these obstacles. Now, uh, that is a good skeleton for our description and containment procedures. So we're going to start working in on the collapsibles, which is additional information, logs and such, that will um, hopefully bring this home. Um, and so what we need to do, more than anything, and I'll stop real quick and talk about this, uh, and then we may let it uh, play for a bit without me actually involving myself. Um, what we did in the penultimate uh, paragraph of the description currently is uh, we started talking about um, Dr. Robinson himself. And you see that uh, you know, there was this energy readings increases and it began to worry the observing scientists. And Dr. Robinson entered the chamber to try and stop the runaway uh, process, uh, but he was unsuccessful one way or the other. Uh, there are, you know, whatever. And that says something about his character and who he is, necessarily. I mean, you could assume that that was just his job. He was the guy that was supposed to do it. Uh, but the, the message you're supposed to take away from that is that he basically saw a problem happening and was like, I'm going to fix this because if I don't, everyone's going to die. Uh, and he tried and he failed. Uh, so now we've built a character. We built the beginnings of a character. From there... I'd like, and I don't know that necessarily this is the best way to do it, but it's the ch uh, way I chose last night. Um, I'd like to build this character in your mind as a person. Like, give him, and so by doing so, or by doing this, I've trying to uh, serve two masters at the same time. I want to build him as a person, but also describe what the people who are involved in his containment on the ghost side of things uh how they see their interactions with him which is him going through a normal day of work because he's not actually dead and them trying to figure out how this works now they can't observe anybody else the only person they can see at site 21 is dr robinson because of the way the event happened and how they were created so it goes and uh, I, I like the uh, inclusion of the detail that he works Mondays through Saturdays. He only has one day off. Um, yeah, he will move to the... And, and some of the times here don't quite make sense, actually. And I'll tell you a little bit why in la later. But um, he'll move to the floor one staff break room, make himself a cup of coffee, sit alone for 15 to 25 minutes, which is sad as shit, before leaving and making its way upstairs, utilizing the site's elevator. Now, here's another uh, foreshadowing, like, little hint. Uh, it should be noted that the Site 21 elevator was damaged during the incident and does not reliably function for site staff at this time. So he's able to use the elevator, but the site staff can't. What's up with that? And there'll be a little edits here and there. To, yeah. Basically, to less words. Now, the timing doesn't work here. That, that should be 755, not 7. Not 855, but I can fix that. I don't think I fix it in the version you're going to see as the final first draft. But, yeah, I did think about it when I was rereading it. Periodically, we'll utilize both its personal and foundation-provided communication devices to speak to others, to other unknown entities. I think you could just say unknown entities. Um, and all attempts to observe these conversations have failed to gain it's, it's difficult to phrase this anything beyond scp xxx's side of these conversations now that's not well that, that uses these conversations twice um I, i'll come up with a better way to phrase that but the idea is that he talks to people and the only thing that the people can record is him and no one else all right come on play and keep hitting the button at 1 p.m He'll eat a prepared meal inside his office. And we're still trying to think about, like, is that, does that make sense? And we go up to the top here and be like, all right, let's reread and see where we're at. Sometimes when you get lost, and this happens to me, and then you just watched it happen to me. Sometimes you get to a point in the article and you're like, I don't really know where to go next. So it can help you to read, especially this is flash fiction. You can reread this in minutes. Just reread your article. Maybe do a couple of corrections. Get yourself back into the 
the mode of things and then get back down to the bottom and start riding again. Uh, and here we are. The entity often stares, often displays. It's like I wanted to have the idea that he stares into the middle distance during his lunch when he doesn't have work to do. He uses work as a distraction from the trauma of accidentally killing everybody at the site. Um, and what, what I was going to basically is, is like he eats his meal and just kind of stares at the wall because he, he, he's disassociating. And that's his coping mechanism for this particular moment. Uh, but instead of being specific, which specificity is usually good, um, but we're talking about general behaviors here, unfortunately, which means that I can't be, he, he's not going to do the same thing every time. Entity often displays signs of coping with trauma during these moments, which is a little on the nose, but we can still make it work during, yeah, here we go, between 1 and 2 p.m., uh, at some point, yeah, there we go. We're going to change it to military time. We're going to change all of our times to military time. Inside its office. The entity often displays signs of coping with trauma during moments when he, and it should be it, but we'll fix that. Yep, that already did. It's not engaged in work. This is a time period uh, when a breakdown, uh, we should probably make that mental, but, you know, mental breakdown is most likely. Trauma coping mechanisms occurring once every 10 to 15 days well we're going to edit that later too and here we go we realized after we're thinking about the uh military time and so the part of the reason not just the fact that he doesn't have work to distract him but part of the reason this is the time he's most likely to have a breakdown is that at 1323 local time is when the event happened uh so that's the part of the day it's just a little thing doesn't mean much most people won't notice but it is the kind of thing that I like to include, like a little detail like that. And also, and we'll talk about this in a second, uh, we set this in March 5th of 2020, so almost two years ago, or actually two years ago now. Um, and there's a reason for that, but we will get to that in a second. The important part, again, is like I was saying, just a little note, and basically at 1.23, um, this event happens. So at 1.23 is also during his lunch period, so he's not able to distract himself with work. And, you know, this causes him to every once in a while just have a breakdown. It happens. I think we're doing a little bit of editing now up the top. Not too much. Yeah, here we go. And then we're going to talk about him leaving work, I believe. Good on. It's taking a second. I think I'm re, -re yeah, I'm rereading. I'm rereading the bits and correcting that, like, for example, where it says Dr. Robinson because he's not an SCP yet in that per version of the story, thus transforming, not a great word, uh, hereby at, uh, was atomized during the process. I'm like, what do I, do I parenthetical that or not? I don't know. Where's my cursor at right now? At the bottom, yeah. And I'm like, 15 to 20, nah. Or 10 to 15, nah. 5 to 10, nah. 3 to 5, nah. 2 to 5. He has frequent breakdowns. At 1800 hours, which is about 5 p.m., Dr. Robinson will be getting... See, th that needs to be corrected to SCP XXX, but, you yeah. know. Once he, and that should be an it, is more than 4.3 meters from the building itself, he becomes in completely invisible. I like how I'm going like, blah, 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 and then he, I deleted everything. Once it leaves the area, it becomes impossible to track. All right, so now we're going to uh, see how quickly we can get to a reveal on this. We'll change everything so that the first log is of routine behaviors and the second log is going to be of uh oh, we're at the bottom of the thing here so i gotta is there a way to ah, there we go on august 9th this has been an hour each week in a different section of the site these events generally occur on thursday i need to change different section to be something more specific uh, on thursdays at 1500 hours but rarely occurred at other times as these incidents have precipitated an alteration of the trauma coping mechanism seen during the regular routines so specifically the office of doctor, and I'm just going to come up with a guy. And then I was like, you know what? No, what's the name of the therapist in The Sixth Sense? Dr. Malcolm Crow. We'll fiddle with this in probably the final draft. Sure, this needs some polish. Specifically that of a Dr. Crow. And breakdowns have become significantly less frequent. It is impossible to determine what is occurring during these events, except in as much as we can observe what SVXSX says during these new events. And again, very rough here, because it's like events, events, events. 
I hate using the same word twice in a sentence. Yeah, and so we get a, a log of statements of his that are be believed to be illogical from the perspective of the ghosts. Of course, I feel guilty. Uh, you told you know they told me I'd get better. They eventually that eventually I'd learn to just live with it. But I close my eyes and they're all there again, watching me. And that feels a little too long. I think I shortened it later. I survived an incident that filled the graveyard. I don't know how many people could say that. Sometimes it's like the walls are talking to me. We're still coming to understand what these statements could potentially mean. Yeah, we're going to make it January so that it's still uh, potentially active and alive. I survived an act. Yeah, there we go. No one knows what that feels like. Um, and something we are going to fiddle with here. Yeah. This is where I'm, I'm, I'm about to start trying to figure out, like, I don't think this is enough. I think I need something a little bit more, uh, something bigger. Uh, but I eventually changed my mind about it. Um, and we're going to fiddle a little bit with our phrasings, our, our, our illogical statements in a second. Let's wait until we get to there. It's unlikely this will actually work. But And then I'm like, yeah, no, nah, we're not doing that. And then I get rid of, uh, I was in an accident that, could fill, that filled a graveyard. I was going to have a Dr. Robinson message to the ghost, but then I was like, that doesn't work either. Yeah, the Osmond Principle, I know. Reminder of the Osmond Principle, which is supposed to be a through thread, but only gets mentioned once now, so maybe it's something that needs to be uh, fiddled with. During lunches, sometimes I think about the Osmond Principle. Like, what if they died that, what if I died that day and I just don't know it? Yeah, I know that doesn't make any sense. We're talking after all. Then I'm like, that's too obvious and on the nose. Hey, you're going to see me rewrite these a lot because they're important for the eventual, if, if we're going to get the twist right, uh, it's got to be it's got to be delivered well i feel like i left something behind in that room i wish i could tell them i'm sorry that feels more subtle to me um yeah and here we go the ghosts are saying it's unknown that the entities uh that it interacts with on a daily basis are them so the idea is like okay this guy's a ghost is he interacting with other ghosts maybe that's what's happened maybe there's a whole side of people that uh, are victims of the Osmond Principle. No, that's weird. That's unlikely. It'd be a strange thing indeed. And then that's a lapse in tone, but it's necess It's okay in this particular sense. Indeed, to have an entire site full of entities that went, uh, that go about their work on a daily basis without knowing that they're dead. And we're about to... I think we have about 10 seconds left. Providence of this idea uh, just came from somebody saying something in chat, I think. That I picked up on and was like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if, and then I, and then I wrote this. I've been uh, kicking around this idea for a while, so the almost basically complete idea was already written in my head. I just needed to put it down to uh, text, which is the reason why I was able to finish it in what looks like 56 minutes. Wait, give, give it a save. Yep, yep, 56 minutes and 16 seconds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the bit, yeah, right there at the end. Uh, yeah, so that, that's that's just the rough process and some of my thinking as I went along the way. Um, yeah, I think that's enough for today. Uh, again, this isn't posted to the wiki because I don't believe it's actually uh, a finished product yet. It's still, it's still rough in a lot of places, but it does the stuff it needs to do. And it's a good skeleton to finish off, especially if I can. I'm going to clean it up myself based on my own sort of feedback. <laughs> it's like I read it and I have some ideas I'm like that's a little too obvious. That's a little too on the nose. That needs to be edited. That's really awkwardly phrased, that kind of stuff. Uh, but once I get it down into a more refined state, I'll start basically passing it around and being like, hey, what do you guys think of this? It's very short, so it's not going to be difficult for people to read. Uh, and the important part is, uh, especially for an article with a twist ending like this, is to make sure that the m most of the people who read it get the twist ending. You're never going to get everybody, but you want to get most of the people that read it to get it. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki, who has pledged at $100. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. And I will see you all again on Thursday.